I was dreaming. I saw a huge map of Africa. And then the next thing was, Africa became washed in the precious blood of Jesus, from south to north and from west to east. And I heard a voice cry. That voice was something extraordinary. I, I'm, I'm sure it was the voice of the Holy Spirit. And he cried, Africa shall be saved. It was like a thunder. I woke up. I said, oh, that is wonderful. The Holy Spirit was in the bedroom. I felt the anointing of the Spirit of God. And then my German brain began to tick again. And I thought, my ministry has no impact in this tiny little country of Lesotho. And now I hear God say, Africa shall be saved. There's something wrong. I must have eaten bad bananas last night. But I had that dream four consecutive nights. And after night number four, I said to my wife, honey, I think God is trying to tell me something. And the mission board of the Felberter Mission to which I belonged came to investigate the whole situation. And I thought they were pleased that I was doing so well. But then he took me aside and he said, you cannot go on doing this. The printing press, all my evangelistic developments, they wanted to stop. I was just to be a missionary like their other missionaries. They didn't want anyone to fry an extra sausage. You had to stick to the rules, be like everybody else. And now I was pregnant, kind of pregnant with that vision uh, of, of, of bringing the gospel of salvation to the whole continent of Africa. So I was now s somehow in a dead end road. I didn't want to offend my German superiors, but I didn't want to offend God. And then I decided to go uh, and uh, hire a room in a hotel uh, right there at the border of, of Lesotho and I thought I'm going to pray here until God has spoken to me. I, I fell on my knees at the bedside there and I said, Lord, for the sake of peace, please allow me to agree with my German brothers. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and then the Lord spoke. Words that make me shake like a leaf in the wind. He said to me, if you drop the vision I gave you of a blood-washed Africa, I have to drop you and give it to someone else to bring it about. I shook, physically, I shook like a leaf. I jumped up. I had been longer than one hour in that hotel room. It was a very short fast. I, I paid my bill, I jumped into the car, and I drove home, and I said, Annie, 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 God has spoken. Where's my typewriter? I'm going to write a letter to Velvet, and I'm going to resign. Oh, and he said, can't you please sleep one night over it? I said, no, no, I can't, I can't sleep any night because God said he's going to drop me if I drop that vision. So I wrote my resignation and then peace, deep peace came into my heart and I've never looked back. Those very men who tried to prevent it later on congratulated me for not having obeyed them. So that is the blessed outcome. God will not allow anyone to thwart him and his plans. No, he uh, puts people out of the way and puts people in the way. But those who are willing to go that way, I felt God could overnight raise anyone, anyone, anyone else 
to do that job, but I was so keen to go with him and see nations uh, shaken for Jesus. Before we had the big tent, which sat 34,000 people, we had one that was sitting about 10,000 people. It was the so-called uh, 10,000 seater. And uh, we moved around South Africa, Southern Africa at that time. And so I came to the trans sky and uh, while we were in the midst of our gospel crusade there, I heard that a very famous African evangelist was just uh, about 50 kilometers away. Uh, I knew his name and I was thrilled that he was so close. So the next day I drove all the way to that other tent and it was not the man there I had expected, not that great. African evangelist, but one of his uh, deputies. But we talked and he said the big man of God in 1972 decided to drop his crusade ministry on a large scale. I listened and listened and listened and suddenly I remembered it was in 1972 that God gave me the vision of a blood-washed Africa that shook me to the core. In those days, I had not even known that great man, but the Lord, unbeknown to me, already put in a replacement. He has replacements, and they are all top choices. They're all top choices. They may be number two or number three, but when God gets hold of a man or a woman, he enables them to fulfill that task. And I humbly submit that that was the case in my own life. The moral of the story is, if I were you, I would not procrastinate and I would not just postpone it I would jump and I would do what God has told me to do. It's in any case the highest calling possible on earth. It's the highest form of human living on earth. That's what it is. And to have the honor to be called by God is more than being the president of the mightiest nation on earth.